In December 1999, a routine shipboard operation aboard the U.S. Navy oiler USNS Pecos suddenly turned into a deadly accident. A U.S. Marine Corps CH-46 Sea Knight helicopter crashed while attempting to land on the ship's flight deck in the Arabian Sea. The crash killed six U.S. Marines and one Navy sailor, making it one of the deadliest U.S. military aviation accidents of that period. Landing and launching aircraft from U.S. Navy vessels is one of the most dangerous routine tasks in military aviation. Pilots are often bringing helicopters or jets down onto a moving deck that can pitch, roll, and heave several feet in seconds, sometimes at night and in rough seas. And when an aircraft misses the arresting cables, the situation can escalate instantly. While arrested landings may appear straightforward, they involve an extraordinary level of precision and complexity. At the heart of the system are arresting cables, also known as cross-deck pendants, stretched across the flight deck. Typically, three cables are laid out, spaced roughly 110 feet apart. Each cable is carefully tensioned to match the specific weight and landing characteristics of different aircraft. Pilots rely on visual cues from the Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, while Landing Signal Officers, or LSOs, provide real-time corrections to guide the aircraft to a precise touchdown. If an aircraft fails to catch an arresting cable, it can trigger a dangerous chain of events. To counter this, pilots apply full power the instant the wheels touch the deck, preparing for a bolter or a snapped cable. Thanks to the robust design of modern arresting systems, accidents during carrier landings have become increasingly rare. Still, failures can happen. In 2016, an arresting cable snapped while attempting to stop an E-2C Hawkeye aboard the aircraft carrier Dwight D. Eisenhower. The aircraft touched down smoothly, and the tail hook initially caught the fourth pendant. But moments later, the cable failed, releasing the aircraft. After being slowed by the cable, the aircraft lacked sufficient speed and plunged off the edge of the flight deck. Only the pilot's composure and exceptional skill kept the aircraft airborne, preventing it from hitting the sea and saving everyone on board. A year earlier, another incident involved an F-A-18 Super Hornet launched from the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt. Shortly after takeoff, the jet suffered an engine malfunction and crashed into the Persian Gulf. The pilots ejected just seconds before impact and were later rescued by search and rescue crews. These incidents highlight the extreme complexity of carrier operations, particularly catapult launches and arrested landings. When accidents occur, search and rescue helicopters are often the first to reach the crash site. A carrier air wing typically includes two helicopter squadrons, primarily assigned to anti-submarine warfare. But during emergencies, these crews race against time, knowing that even small delays can cost lives. On June 7, 2014, an AV-8B Harrier 
aboard the USS Bataan faced a critical situation when its front landing gear malfunctioned shortly after takeoff. The jet slowed to prevent further damage while coordinating with the ship's landing signal officers who confirmed the nose gear had not deployed. With limited options at sea, the carrier deployed a rare, purpose-built emergency landing device on the flight deck. The Harrier descended in carefully controlled steps, touching down hard but safely. Executing a high-stakes landing scenario no pilot can truly train for. Behind the scenes, arresting gear crews work continuously to keep the system ready for immediate use. Cross-deck pendants are usually replaced after about 125 landings. Purchase cables, however, are far more labor-intensive to replace and are changed less frequently. Naval aviators undergo specialized training designed to prepare them for extreme conditions while maintaining safety and efficiency. One key step is Field Carrier Landing Practice, or FCLP. During these exercises, land-based runways are configured to replicate an aircraft carrier's deck, complete with markings and landing aids. Pilots practice approaches using the Fresnel Lens System, commonly called the Meatball, while LSOs issue commands just as they would at sea. Over time, pilots learn to precisely control the aircraft by following the meatball and responding instantly to LSO guidance. Unlike land-based runways, a carrier's moving deck and turbulent airflow make every landing far more demanding. Pilots must align perfectly with the center line while maintaining the correct glide slope. The improved Fresnel lens system accounts for ship movement, aircraft type, and wing configuration to calculate the ideal approach path. To prevent accidents, the Navy overhauled arresting and securing systems, upgraded deck lighting and landing aids, sharpened pilot training for night and shipboard operations, and tightened ship-to-aircraft coordination, dramatically improving safety for helicopters and fighters at sea. For more deep dive videos like this, hit subscribe and check out the rest of the content on the channel.